Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. The big argument when uh, I first really got into technology, back when the internet was first available to me in the early 90s, it was all about uh, OS2 versus Windows. Big, big, huge flame wars that never went anywhere, much like OS2 for those of you who were on that side. Sorry about that. Uh, these days, the big war uh, seems to be between iOS and Android, even though we've talked about several times over. Uh, they're really in completely separate universes, and that's okay. They're competing, but they're also not competing at the same time. iOS, locked down, uh, really only available on the devices Apple wants it available on. It, the ec ecosystem works, and you can't deny... Uh, what was their, their earnings call? It just happened right before this broadcast. It was 37 million? Was it something like that? W was it 37 million? 37 billion. What, which one was it? They made a lot of money. So for the iPhone 4S allegedly being a disappointment, I'd say I'd be pretty happy with that disappointment. On the other hand, you have Android. And it's open-ish. It's not completely open. I don't want to go into that again, but... The idea behind Android as a platform, not just an operating system, a platform upon which experiences can be built, gives it the power that it has. You could run it pretty much on anything that can run it. That's what makes it so wonderful. But along with uh, the, uh, the variety of devices that might be available on any platform, inevitably uh, there is a word that's introduced, and it's, to some, even though there are more than four letters in the word fragmentation, it is a four-letter word. Uh, we've done an article that I think Android uh, lovers would appreciate, as well as people who may not be fans of Android should also appreciate. Aptly titled, and this is, by the way, written uh, from the perspective of uh, a, a diehard, I would consider, a diehard Android user, and backed up with uh, quotes from Android uh, developers. So uh, Eddie Ringel crafted the article on LockerGnome.com. Click the link in the uh, description. You can read along with me. Programmers, well, I'm not going to read verbatim. Programmers' perspective, how Android's fragmentation can be a good thing. And it's very rare that you'd hear fragmentation being a good thing. But Eddie, I, I believe, asserts his uh, point of view, uh, and it does it very, very well. I reviewed the article before it was published and you know, offered some uh, suggestions. Uh, you know, Google is getting better at this. So if you're not familiar with the core of what fragmentation is and why it might be a bad thing, since Android, much like Windows, can run on a variety of hardware configurations, um, you know, what might work on one device may not work on another. Even though they may both be running Android, uh, there's a, some degree of incompatibilities potentially between the two, and that creates fragmentation. You've got a, you know, a thousand different devices to choose from rather than just three. And those thousand different devices don't need to be cross-compatible with one another, uh, but you have a fragmentation where an experience on one device is going to be completely different uh, than another. Uh, so as you know, Eddie reached out to uh, this developer, Jake Wharton, uh, who, by the way, develops for both Android and general uh, uh, web, uh, I guess, applications, you know, web-based apps. Uh, you know, the guy's got experience and, and certainly speaks very well as to this not really being an issue. As much of an issue as is, uh, some, uh, I guess, detractors would say, those who would say that Android is a big fat bucket of fail thanks to fragmentation, uh, it's getting better. Uh, you know, Google has, you know, clamped down on the amount of customizations that can be made on top of Android, uh, pretty much wiping out additional frameworks uh, that might confuse users. Uh, that might uh, increase the chances of incompatibilities uh, between one Android uh, configuration and another. And as Android continues to mature, this is going to get better for the user. So e e the idea, uh, and this is the insight, and I'm going to read directly from the article here. And as I said, there's a lot of good nuggets in here for all of you who don't really see Android uh, as you know having an issue with fragmentation today. It's there, it's just not as pronounced. Uh, this is a quote from Jake within the article. The Android platform has been fundamentally designed since 1.6 with advanced filtering mechanisms for nearly every asset to allow targeting layouts, menus, strings, images, icons, various 
objects uh, and platform components so that the best available option is always used. There are simple, well-documented patterns to implement the same functionality for filtering your code. There is zero reason that you should not be able to write an application that targets every platform, every screen, and every device. So more than anything, it's not a shortcoming of the platform. It's more of a shortcoming of developers. I mean, you can have a sloppy developer on any platform, writing any code. I can tell you, despite Apple saying there are how many thousands of applications in the App Store, most of them suck. I'm not kidding. A lot of them are very poorly designed. Same can be said for any platform. But what Jake's saying is that Android can support it. It's just that developers seem to be a little lazy. That's what he's saying, not me. But I guess it would make sense. If a developer had not optimized his or her code properly to run in the variety of configurations, well, it's no surprise. This only exacerbates uh, the decision-making uh, decision uh, processes and specifically the fumbles that uh, someone has to go through. It makes it worse because uh, if you have fav your favorite software here and it runs fine on this phone that's running uh, the Android operating system, and you, use, you switch to another phone, and suddenly it doesn't work as well anymore, that just introduces frustration. What Jake's saying is, it's not really um, Android's fault. It's potentially the developer's fault, at least since 1.6. And here we are with uh, 4.0 in front of us. It looks to be an amazing upgrade for those of you who can get it. See, there's another issue with fragmentation is the over-the-air updates. Uh, you know, um, in, in being able to push out newer versions of the operating system to every Android phone. That just increases the uh, uh, possibility of uh, fragmentation being a frustration. But it's not Android's fault. That might be the carrier's fault. So this is someone who loves Android, and he's making very cogent points, whether you like Android or not. I still believe that it's necessary we have uh, an alternative to everything in the marketplace, uh, whether you choose to support it or not. Uh, Competition is always healthy. You need uh, someone uh, nipping at your heels if you intend on moving forward with any uh, speed. So uh, take a look. I, I, I was, uh, you know, as I said, wanting to pull up that quote from the article, if only because I wanted to plus one it, share it, and, and like it on uh, YouTube. Or not on YouTube. This is on YouTube. On Facebook and, and Twitter. Uh, but I, I thought that, you know, for those of you who thought I was biased and did not like Android, I just wanted to point out that that's... A, it's never been the case, and B, uh, you know, we take a very balanced approach with the uh, content that we provide for you, uh, no matter what phone you use, no matter what platform you love on LockerGnome.com. We, we cater to all geeks, no matter how you care to support us.